The Nintendo Switch is a fantastic little gaming portable device, but there's always been questions raised about what exactly is it capable of that Nintendo is not really allowing it to do. And this is something that we've explored a little bit on the channel before. We've done things like using YouTube before YouTube was actually an app on the Switch. Loading something. Oh no, I just hit the play button and it did it. So there's a way to watch YouTube, not through YouTube at all. One time we even ordered an Uber. This is coming out of my pocket or the business because I didn't check. So hopefully the business. But a lot of people have been working hard to find more ways to get other interesting functions out of the Switch. And by far one of the craziest ones we've now seen is turning it into an Android tablet. Now, as you can see here, we already have Android running on this Switch. And what's really interesting about this particular setup is that it's not really a permanent mode that you put the Switch into. Instead, it's a specific way you have to boot the Switch every single time. So if I turn this off right now and turn it back on, it's just gonna be a regular Switch, for example. So it's fully shut off, turn it back on, and it's just a regular Switch. Just completely acts normal as though it was not running Android a moment ago, which is bizarre. Now, I'm not gonna go into the full in-depth of how the initial setup for this goes. The very short version is that we have loaded up an image onto the SD card that's currently inside of the Switch, and I'm gonna walk you guys through how we actually have to boot it up every single time to make Android work. So to begin with, we gotta make sure this is back off. Now, once we made sure that our Switch is completely shut off, we have to start off by booting it in recovery mode, which is not something you're normally supposed to be able to do as just a private Switch owner, but there's a workaround that's really simple. Now, to begin with, you need to actually have a little tool like this. It's specially designed for the Switch in mind. There was a way to do this before if you just kind of drove some pins into holes, but it wasn't exactly safe and not a great idea. So with this, it's a surefire way that you just put it into the right Joy-Con sliding rail, push it down, once it's in there, hold the plus button for the volume, press power, and then just wait a little bit to make sure that it's booting up in that recovery mode. You're not gonna see anything on the screen, but it is entering that mode. Now it's worth noting, this is not something that every single switch is capable of. You actually have to check to make sure that the serial number of the switch you own is an old enough model because this is something that Nintendo fixed in later production designs. So I know the screen currently is still blank, but I'm pretty sure it's in that recovery mode. So then you have to connect it to a computer every single time you want to boot this in Android, you must connect to a computer. We have our little laptop station set up right here. Plug it in. And you can see I already have this app opened up. And I'm just gonna click on injecting the payload. And that just immediately booted us into here. So once we're on this screen, Go to more configurations, and then we wanna launch Switch Root Android. Now when you're doing the initial setup, there's a lot more you have to do in this interface, but we're not gonna deal with that right now. We're just gonna get right back into using this as an Android tablet. So we actually have something on the screen now. It is launching, it's still taking a while, but there is progress. Now I know we glanced over the whole initial setup side of things. That is a lot more of a complex process that I'm not gonna get in depth on right now, but we do have the link down below for the website we used for getting access to all the things we need, as well as step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. And it looks like it is done launching Android. And then every time you launch it, it's gonna give you a quick moment where it freaks out for a second and says that process system isn't responding. You just hit wait, and then we're good to go. And now, it's an Android tablet. You can already see we have a bunch of games that have installed from previous times. These are things that we installed before while it was running. We shut it off, went back to Switch mode, relaunched Android mode. All that stuff is still intact and working because it's all saved on the SD card that's currently on the Switch and acting as the Android part of the system. Now to be clear, this is effectively making the Switch work like an Android tablet. It's not necessarily letting us do things like pirate a bunch of games or just play a bunch of stuff for free, but instead it allows us to play any of those free-to-play Android games that are on the Play Store, as well as being able to actually purchase things or even do stuff like watch movies that we can rent. So we've got everything up and running, and as you can see, we just have a straight-up Android interface on the Switch now. Uh, there's a couple different things I want to try out, but I think first, we gotta play some games, right? So let's go ahead and do something a lot of people wish made its way to the Switch. The Sims. It is really crazy to just use the Switch like you would use the Switch and see just the Android interface pop up. I want to change the volume, the button still works, but it's all acting like I'm using some Android tablet instead of, well, the Switch. This is one of those games that I'm actually really surprised has not made its way to the Switch yet, and this is such a good example of just seeing something like it work on the system. I feel like The Sims would be perfectly at home on the Switch, and yet it has not happened yet. I wonder who's to blame. E.A.
Sports. It's only a game. So as you can see right now with this setup that we're using, uh, we have it up and running. We don't actually have Joy-Cons working on it just yet, but instead we're relying on the touchscreen controls and it acts just like it would with any tablet, which is something that is a little underutilized on the Switch. I think some people even forget that it has a touchscreen because you can basically use it on the main menu and a very select handful of games, most of which are ports of mobile titles and stuff that would be on, well, Android. So another example of something that you can't play on the Switch is the Go series, which surprisingly you'd think would have made its way here by now, considering that it's on basically every other platform. But here we've got Tomb Raider running on our Android Switch. So Android machine. Yeah, and it works perfectly smooth. It just feels like I'm using a tablet designed for this. Like there's not any kind of weird hiccups, especially on a game as simple as this. So running this definitely pushes the switch a little bit. Uh, you'll notice I actually have it plugged in right now because this eats through the battery extremely fast. Probably not faster than some of the most intensive games on the switch, but it definitely pushes it. So much so that we also can actually hear the fan running right now. And yeah, it's pushing out some warm air. It is. It is trying really hard right now. By the way, if you're wondering about this blue and carbon fiber switch we've been using in today's video, this is actually made using skins thanks to today's sponsor, Dbrand. They have a whole bunch of different designs that are totally safe to use on your switch for the Joy-Cons, the switch itself, or even the dock. Check out the link down below for more info. So of course, playing Android games on this is pretty cool, but what's even more crazy is the kind of apps we gain access to. Now, this is a little limited compared to some other Android devices because of the type of Android OS it's running. For instance, if we tried playing Netflix, we can't actually run the app at all. And if you just try to go through the browser to it, it just redirects to the app and doesn't work. But there are other ones that work pretty much seamlessly. A good example is Instagram. So this actually forces it into portrait mode. So we have to hold our switch like this and yeah, it's just like looking on Instagram on my phone or a tablet. It's that straight up interface, which is a bizarre thing. There's this weird disconnect in my brain right now of seeing this interface on a Switch screen and the fact that I'm holding my Switch vertically without using the Joy-Cons. But, but yeah, here we are just on my Instagram page, which by the way, if you want to follow that, it's right here. It's Kevin Kenson. You should follow. Now, of course, because this is a Switch, there are some major limitations in what we can do for some of these apps. For instance, on Instagram, I can just browse Instagram. I can't exactly take a photo right now because the Switch does not have a camera. So, not something we can do. Something that's funny too about how this, you know, works, but at the same time doesn't exactly work is that it just forces different display types depending on the app you're running. So I can't actually make it swap between landscape or portrait if I'm just on like the main screen. But if I open an app that's in landscape, it goes to landscape. If I go to portrait app, it goes to portrait. That's the only way to flip them. Otherwise, I am just trapped in the one I'm currently on. I'm gonna be really honest with you guys. Uh, I don't see a ton of reasons why I would ever wanna actually do this personally, but it's insane that this works. <laughs> Now the fact alone that we're able to use these apps and app games on the Switch is cool, but what's even crazier is how some of the Switch's functionality still kind of works in a way, in particular, the dock. Using the Switch dock, we can actually still have this work like a docked setup. Mostly, kind of. There's a couple little weird things that happen when using Android in this dock setup. For one thing, the Switch is still pushing out a 720p signal. It is not activating the 1080p mode and the screen on the Switch is actually still on. If you look at the dock, you will see the screen is still playing and it's just mirroring it onto the TV. But this is letting us play these Android games on our TV in dock mode. So with this setup, any Android game that offers controller support, you are able to use a controller and play in dock mode like this. Now again, there's some weird constraints to how this works. For instance, I couldn't actually set this up while the Switch is already docked. In fact, you actually have to connect the controller while you're still in the handheld tablet mode, launch the game in question, and then dock it once the controller is connected and good to go, because then you can start controlling it. But while you're still on the home screen, you need to be using the Switch tablet handheld because you have to use the touchscreen to control it. Now, while there are a lot of app games you can play on Android using this hack, I think one of the most interesting things though is being able to tap into games that it's kind of surprising that haven't really come to the Switch yet. And a really good example of this is PUBG. There is a mobile version of PUBG that does work in this setup that you can't play on the Switch normally. 
You know, using this really makes me think a lot about what it would actually be like if this was real. I mean, obviously it's real, I'm able to do these things with a hack, but it's not an actual product that Nintendo makes. Sure, Android tablets are a thing, but an actual Nintendo-focused product, basically just another new version of the Switch, that embraced the idea of being something more than just a video game device. There's already a lot of different ways in which the Switch kind of walks the line a little bit, but just doesn't go all in towards this concept of it being a tablet. I mean, we've got some popular media streaming apps, but there's a lot of other really big ones still missing. You have the ability to connect a keyboard to it, but there's not really any useful reason why you would right now. I mean, the system doesn't even have an internet browser yet. At least not an official one. There's just something really interesting to me about the idea of using something like a Switch system, but having it also work as a multimedia device. Not something that necessarily takes away from the gaming aspect of it, but just adds more general utility to it. And this is something that Nintendo has kind of experimented with in the past. I mean, the 3DS as a system actually had more interesting utility uses than the Switch currently does. It had other media streaming apps, it actually even supported things like Netflix, and you even had ways to use social media platforms with it. So this is an unheard of territory for Nintendo, it's just that question of whether or not they'd ever actually take the leap to make something beyond just a gaming-focused system. And here's the thing, I also definitely get the appeal of having a purely game-focused device. You sometimes want something that isn't all things at one, and that's why I really like the idea of it being something else that they just launch in the future. There's still the regular Switch that lets you just use it as a gaming device, and of course the Switch Lite on its way as well. But then there's this idea too of like, hey, what if there was just a more expensive option out there that did add all this kind of functionality? Now, do I think that everyone who owns the Switch should figure out how to put Android on it so they can access Instagram? No, that's a little excessive. But it's just showing how certain basic apps like that that could very easily fit into the interface and use of the system just aren't there yet. There's also the thought, and this is extremely hypothetical and absolutely crazy, probably not something I think Nintendo would actually do, but it also brings up the thought of are we thinking about the Switch Pro wrong? When everyone talks about the Switch Pro, we talk about it in regards to adding more power to the Switch and kind of something on par with the Xbox One X or PlayStation 4 Pro, where it's more power to hit, a higher resolution, better frame rates, all awesome stuff. But what if another aspect of a potential Switch Pro is functionality? Something that is truly an all-in-one tablet device with the additional benefit of letting you play all your favorite Switch games. Of course, what am I talking about? It's Nintendo, that's, yeah, it's not gonna happen.